Hello everyone, this is a brief tutorial on how to use Blackboard and uh, I've gotten some uh, some people, some students have told me that they cannot read their uh, blog posts or their posts and discussion forums so I'm just going to uh, give you a tour of the course. This should be the screen that you see whenever you first log on to the Wayland Virtual Campus and I always go to courses. I'm the instructor, but uh, you of course will see courses where you're a student. And uh, I'm training in Blackboard. Actually, I completed that course. So, okay, and it comes up on mine uh, at announcements. And if you notice, the announcements are not in order. I don't think. Um, I just when I think something is more important, I can move it up to the top. And uh, as you can see, I'm a little concerned about the reading reviews because I haven't received any yet. I don't know if this is because they're all due next week or because uh, there's some kind of uh, issue, but I can't see any of them yet. So if any of you guys have uh, reading reviews to turn in, please turn them in to me. and uh, Or just click on the reading review and uh, type me a little message so I can figure out where these things are going. Okay. And then there's instructor information, which is, of course, it's about me. And I'm required by the university to put uh, my wonderful dean up here. Uh, Dr. Sadler was one of my professors at Wayland whenever I attended the Plainview campus. So I like him a whole lot and uh, really glad to be working with him. And then the Please Introduce Yourself form. This is the first form in the course. And I believe most people have introduced themselves so far. And as you can see, there are a lot of people that have introduced themselves. Um, this one right here means there's one post on this thread that I have not read yet. And there's only one post on the thread, I think. It's uh, Aubrey. And you can see at the top, you can see that uh, the title of the thread, uh, Reply, Yvette has written something, and so has Maribel. And I've already read Yvette. I have not read Maribel, which is why it's in bold. And this is the parent thread, and these are the responses. And, and each response has the title of the thread it's responding to. And, you, and I clicked on it up there, and I read it right here. Now, let me show you something. The way I'm used to forums working is a lot different than this. And I'm just going to use a random example here. I'm going to look at the active topics. Now these are all the active topics. And when I click on one, uh, that's not a good example. You find something, okay, is this too much to ask for thread? The title of thread is up here, and then you can see all the replies. Now I don't know why Blackboard chose to do it uh, with all of the replies being closed. Um, sorry about that. But this is the, th this is the first one. I'm going to click on the next and that's the reply and that's the, and then we're going to uh, get to the last reply here by, you, by I think, uh, the, well this is by Mirabelle. So even, even I'm getting confused, but you can, I always use this uh, tree right here to um, show me what I'm reading. And if you post, you will see your post up here. Okay, now the syllabus. I attached two PDF files. One PDF is the syllabus proper, and the other PDF is the reading review instructions. The reading reviews are very, very important, so please do them, and please uh, review this, these instructions. And I have a video instruction that looks a lot like this video, where I take you through what I expect, uh, what I require in the reading review. And this is all my stuff, I think. Okay, any questions? This is a very, very important forum. This is where 
you can ask questions you would normally ask in a classroom setting. Most of you have been in college classrooms where the professor is talking and all of a sudden you have an idea and you just kind of blurt it out. You know, that's, that happened to me a lot in uh, every stage of my uh, education where I just ask the professor something. Well, this is where you can ask me questions. And this is where uh, John told me, hey, I can't, re I can't really see what's going on. So that's one of the reasons why I'm making the video. And I wanted to announce, don't forget about the timelines. And let me know if you have questions about the syllabus on this question here. And you just click on it. And it's exactly like the last one. This is the title. And then you ask a question. Hit reply. Now, timelines for midterms, I am giving several lectures about the histories of the New Testament, and I thought it would be good if I gave you timelines so that you could easily see everything that's going on during the time period in which we're talking about. Please note that you do not need to know anything that happened after 325. One of these um, timelines goes all the way to like the modern era and you can stop and I actually stopped my lecture on it at 325. Uh, why do I choose 325? Well it's kind of arbitrary but it's traditionally when the New Testament canon was closed and I don't think the New Testament ever really became a closed canon but uh, especially not until the printing press because the printing press standardized everything. But that's an argument for a different day. But here I have uh, number one timeline for the development of Christianity. And this is done by a PhD somewhere else that uh, is a veteran of teaching uh, or introduction to New Testament courses. And this gives you an idea of what was going on while the New Testament was being written and compiled. And the New Testament backgrounds timeline is actually from Metzger. I went through all of our readings for the first um, until the midterm and I took out every date that Metzger refers to and gave it a little description from Metzger with links to Wikipedia. If you could see the links right here and right there and right there. So that way you can get as much background information as you want. But what you really need to know are, uh, is when all this stuff happened. And this is a really cool website, the Early Christian Writings. Um, you can't read it, obviously, but these are all the books of the New Testament along with the Early Christian Writings that were produced d about the same time. And you can get a feel for how much is left out of the New Testament. And you can see they're all hyperlinked, and you can click on any of them and read, for most of them, you can read the text and get some bibliographic information on the texts. And then, just for fun, I added the Alexander the Great timeline because he changed the world so much uh, that we're studying. And uh, it's a lot of fun, and if you want to, you can watch the movie Alexander with uh, Colin Farrell, and uh, he makes a pretty awesome Alexander, I think. YouTube videos. I was really excited when I found these, so I put the little ex explanation, explanation point. And uh, for weeks one and two, I selected um, these few videos. Not much, uh, but most of it is about the mystery religions. I think that most of you have watched this already, and I'm trying to put together something for Google Earth Maps. Um, I found a few New Testament professors who have uh, found all the ancient cities in the Bible on Google Earth, like the first generation of Google Earth, and not the uh, current version, which has the wonderful 3D and the pictures and all that stuff. So I've been working on that, and uh, hopefully I'll have something. It's very, very difficult to find ancient cities in Google Earth, because it's mostly orient orientated toward uh, modern cities. And you have to know uh, where these 
cities were located just by looking at looking at the map and that's uh, very very difficult to do but I have managed to find ancient Corinth and ancient Ephesus and ancient Philippi now when I compared the when I compared it to the coordinates given by the other guys uh, Ephesus was like 150 miles north of where the actual uh, ancient ruins were so I included a video about that because uh, Corinth and Ephesus are pretty amazing archaeological finds and that's where it is right here Philippi like I said uh, Greece now um, one of these guys is kind of a weirdo uh, this the guy that did Philippi and uh, one other I think he also did Ephesus um, he's a little loopy but he has really really good pictures so you can see here this is the stadium at Ephesus and it is magnificent um, it postdates Paul. You know, it, it was there whenever Paul was in the city, but it was like way down here, you know, the, the top. And they just kept on building and building and building as the uh, city grew. And you see here the Temple of Apollo in Corinth. Uh, Corinth is also pretty good. Um, I'm not exactly sure why uh, this video looks different from the rest of them. Uh, I had to enter in my own dimensions for the thumbnail and uh, that's probably why but I don't know why it wouldn't just copy over oh I remember uh, blackboard makes you uh, search for a YouTube video so if the if the tags are wrong or different in the uh, YouTube search engine it's impossible to find a video whereas you can just type in like the uh, user or the title in YouTube itself and you can find the video but if the thumb, if the tags aren't inserted properly by the author, you're not going to be able to find it to post it here. So I had to embed it on my own, and uh, it looks kind of funky, but it's a really good video. Okay, here's the part we all know and love: the weekly assignments. We are currently on week one, and uh, all assignments are due uh, today by midnight. Except for the reading review, we postponed that a week because a lot of people didn't have their books. But uh, everybody can listen to the lecture and take notes and um, complete the discussion section. And I, on this one, I uh, put in links to all of the um, places that you need to go in the course and. I also have uh, resources online here, but uh, I didn't put in links in every um, entry because you should know where to go after the uh, second week or so. And week two is going to be uh, the Gospel of Mark and uh, Metzger reading. So in your in your 500 word reading review. You formulate a question about Metzger and about the Gospel of Mark. That's two questions. And then another question of your choice and just write about uh, why you are interested in these three different topics. And um, you will easily get your 500 word uh, quota. And of course, every class period, every class session, every week, will have this, pretty much the same assignments. And it differs because the reading and the text are different, and the lecture's different. But you can kind of get into a rhythm of the course. And you can see week three doesn't have a YouTube video yet. Um, I have recorded it. I just don't want to get uh, too far ahead so that I can um, change the content if I need to uh, based on uh, student progress and interest and that kind of thing. So I need your feedback. And then we have weekly discussion. This is where it gets kind of hairy because a lot of people are talking and it's hard to find um, where you are. But I'm going to go to this middle one here. What do you think about the mystery religions? Because there's 28 posts and we can kind of see how chaotic it is. But here you go. Here's the parent one right here, the earliest. Let me scroll up a little. And you can see that I made a lot of posts, 
But I, I replied to Tanner, and then I came down here and replied to Jessica. Um, I didn't reply to Tanner a second time because I already replied to him once. Didn't want to make it look uh, like I was picking on him. And then I replied to Jessica and Joel and so on and so forth. But you can see um, where your name is here and the date. I always look at the date because I know when I'm on the computer. You know, for example, I was on the computer uh, late last night or early this morning, however you want to put it. And I lost track of where I was. See, I'm here too, 12.15 and then 12.32. And you see, it's not in order of when I posted. It's in order of the parent posts. Like, I'm responding to John, who posted uh, 8.24.12. I posted two days later. But then the next post here is 8.25.12, the very next day. And then I responded to him there, so it's connected in the order. So it's in order of the, all the original posts. And then the replies are placed underneath it no matter when it was posted. I don't know why it does it like that. It's extremely confusing. But uh, I think you could get used to it, especially if you're reading the posts. Because I know I can remember what Jessica said. So I can kind of look at the just the dates and the names, and I can kind of follow the conversation, even though the posts aren't there for me to read, which they should be. So I don't I don't know why, like I said, um, I don't know why they chose this. It looks like a very archaic setup. Like uh, it feels like we're back when uh, Al Gore first invented the internet, and we're having to. Uh, learn how to use the old ways again, <laughs> but I've never had to do this on a forum before except for ones that were super super old but uh, you kinda get the idea there and then um, reading this is the original post I said take a look at the Jesus post blah blah, blah. and then but I want to see what Ronaldo said so he's like, I don't know much about the religions or cults, so I'm going to hit reply. And then I type my message here. I don't have anything to say right now. Mine is uh, somewhere else. And then it will appear right under where Reynaldo was. He's right here, and then the reply would be right there. So hopefully that clears up some stuff. Uh, because it is extremely difficult at first. You will get used to it. Okay, lecture notes. For some reason, uh, not many people have looked at this, but I think it could be useful to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open it because... Um, it's going to take a second. Brand new MacBook. Still takes a while to open posts, open programs. Okay, whenever I gave my lecture, uh, first thing I did was I copied week one's assignments, and then I, I, uh, you know, created the lecture and the PowerPoint presentation. This is exactly the order that all of the PowerPoint pres presentations and all of my lectures are in. I put it in these notes so that you can have them to study more. And what I would do is you can fully edit this. So I'm going to go to, this is a Mac, so I have to go to Inspector, I think. <laughs> and first thing I would do is take out the these numbers here because they get, they get really, they're really a pain. But I'd be listening to the lecture and I can take notes. And of course you can pause the video whenever you want. And you write down whatever you need to, um, whatever you need to between the uh, lines here. But uh, I would just take this out in your formatting. And I'm going to try and not do that anymore, but it's really difficult to give a lecture without uh, notes for me. So these are my notes. 
and uh, you can follow along and you don't have to do as much work because I want you to concentrate on your questions and your insights rather than you having to worry about taking notes but then again you do need to memorize stuff for the midterm so we go back and you can see I have one two and three and I will post more as we go along okay reading review this is a part that that uh, I'm not quite sure if I built it properly I think that I did but uh, here goes we go to week one to turn in the first one you can type in let's see review submission history okay I've already done it it looks like this I just go to week two um, you can type in your book review here or and then hit um, submit down here or you can hit browse your computer and take you know pick out wherever you saved your uh, book review and then hit choose and submit and that'll send your book review to me okay I think that we've done the weekly discussion board yeah sorry I skipped one okay weekly blog uh, you guys have been fine with this just click on week one for the first one create a blog entry and go to town just give me a title and type in your blog which is your personal reflection on what you've learned this week and then hit submit or post entry or you can um, attach a file but I have not had that succeed with me yet so I don't know how that's going to, how exactly that's going to work and then student feedback please give me your feedback and insights related to the course I really want to hear from you and uh, understand how the course is working for you so that I can improve I can make changes or I can do things a little bit more uh, effectively just let me know what's going on uh, you can you can start a new thread I, I put some uh, starter questions here that I would like to know I would like to know for example if your timelines are helpful the one the YouTube videos that I gave you uh, do you think that that is helping you remember uh, the order of events in the ancient world and does it give you any insight into what was going on at the time the New Testament was written I just want to know if uh, this is an effective way to teach and also uh, what do you think about the video lectures and the video syllabus and uh, the reading reviews I think the reading reviews are critical but uh, you guys might think that it's a well God forbid it's a waste of time or um, you might have an idea that's better but uh, I think that the, the asking questions is how we learn so I hope that you uh, learned a little bit about the course and please fully explore this course because it's not really that hard to use once you get the hang of it and uh, be very patient one thing that I do is I turn on a YouTube uh, playlist and listen to Yo-Yo Ma play with the cello and it relaxes me and helps me in all of my frustrations with Blackboard. Please also contact me if you have any questions or concerns about the course and I will see you around. I never quite know how to shut this off.